Hey everybody, welcome to Hashing It Out. I'm Jordan Mack. I'm a senior software engineer here at the Nervos Foundation. And with me today is Monica Marie, who is the Chief of Staff at Godwoken. How are you doing today? Hey Jordan, great to be here with you. Excited to be on one of these chats with you guys. Yeah, so it's been it's been um, a little while since we've done one on updates. So we wanted to make sure that we did that. We have quite quite a few. It's going to be a very long list, so we want to get straight into that. Uh, but before we do, this is a live broadcast, so I have to mention three things that I always mention. It's number one, we're not going to be talking about the price today, and we're not going to be talking about any future exchanges that Nervos might be listed on. And all opinions are of the individuals, not of the Nervos Foundation. And with that said, you are welcome to ask any questions in the chat. I think we're looking at, we're broadcasting on Twitter and YouTube, but I'm thinking that I only see the questions from YouTube. So if you want to ask a question, feel free to. We will try to get into it at the end, but this is a very long list here. We'll actually see if we have time today. So uh, let's get in, straight into it. So some uh, updates from the Nervos Foundation. Uh, the first one is that we had the Layer 1 mainnet third anniversary. So if you guys don't know, the mainnet launched in November 15th of 2019. And um, so the halving, the halving event is at the fourth anniversary. So we're now three quarters of the way there. So Monica, do you know what the halving is? Yeah, so I'm gonna share my understanding as like a non, non-tech non person. I think sometimes people assume like, cause you work in tech, you know all of these like technical terms and you are pretty much as knowledge as developers and it's just not the case. So um, my understanding is that basically every four years, you know, there there's a, Oh, Jordan, I think you're like, okay. Um, every four years, there's this, you know, having that takes place. And um, in, initially, I think when a coin is like launched on a chain, it starts off, I think Bitcoin started off as like 50 Bitcoin. And then after every four years, it halved. So what would that be like 25 Bitcoins per block or something? And then so on and so forth. So I think the goal maybe with that is like to reduce inflation, but then I think it also has the potential to drive up the price of the, the token. So that's my understanding. But again, I'm not like super technical. I think you could probably do a much better job. At yeah, that's that's pretty much dead on for the most part. Um, it, that's exactly what it was. It was 50 and then 25 with Bitcoin. With with Nervos, it's a little di bit different um, because we, especially since the, our block time is dynamic. Um, but we do have a fixed number per epoch, and that's going to be cutting down. That's going to be cutting in half, and this is for primary issuance, uh, which will eventually, just like Bitcoin, go to zero in a very, very long time from now. But um, every time that happens, there is a big change in the amount of supply that's available. So that changes the economics um, quite a bit. It can can affect certain things uh, related to price. We'll see. It's not directly. Everything is, is actually just market-based. So we'll see what it actually does. But, you know, there are a lot of theories that fly around on that. And um, this is going to be the first halving event that's going to happen for Nervos. So it's, it's going to be interesting. We're a little, what is it, a little under a year now away from that. Um, and people can track that on. There's a couple sites that are, are being put up for that. I know that, I think it's our community member, Stuart, had one, but I don't have his uh, in front of me. And then there's nervoshalving.com, um, which is my site, which I'm going to be, it's very basic right now, uh, but I will be putting more on that. So we got to keep moving though, because we have so many topics to get through. The next one is, so Terry um, from uh, the, our founder, Terry did a sharing event on Twitter spaces recently on um, to the Chinese community on November 16th. And so he made a, a bunch of things that were discussed. This was all in Chinese, but we got an English translation later on that's just available. Um, and we'll have the link in the show notes. And so I, th I think it's also on our Nervos blog. Um, he shared his view on a bunch of things and upcoming initiatives for t uh, 2023. Um, and it's uh, it's definitely worth watching, I would say, if you haven't seen, a, if you haven't seen the blog post or anything. Um, and just quickly, though, Monica, what was your biggest takeaway in that? Yeah, so for me, you know, um, being on the God Woken team, we have Build Club, which I, I don't know if I should go too in depth, but basically our incubator, right? And we have projects that apply, you know, for, for grants, um, for different types of support. And so being that we get all these different projects, uh, we want to encourage them to build on both L1 and L2. 
And so for me, the biggest takeaway was just that they're going to be providing more information, more support for people that are wanting to build on layer one, which I think is really important. So lowering the development barriers. Um, I also read that they're going to be working together with DotBit, who has been really successful launching on layer one. And I think that's going to be really beneficial for them to get more insight um, you know, on how to provide that type of support. And, and so with that, I'm looking forward to getting, you know, more applications for layer one and also having them in, in build club. Yeah, yeah, definitely. That's a, something we need to achieve within the ecosystem. Um, and my biggest takeaway was there's going to be a renewed focus on governance and DAOs. And I think we've mentioned this a couple times now. Um, there's, there's really been, um, it's, Part of the long-term goal to really decentralize everything with Nervos, not just with the technology, but with the governance itself. And so there's a renewed focus on this. There's going to be new DAOs created. And this opens up a lot of opportunities for anybody in the community that's really wanted to do something. And if you're, or you're somebody who's, who's capable and showing that you have strong leadership skills, like this is really the time to step up and you can actually make a difference in our community and, and have the backing of the foundation behind you. Um, so the next thing we need to go through is Forcebridge, and I'm just going to go through this really quick because this was a question from the community, you know, what's going with that, going on with that. Right now it's in maintenance mode, which means there's not really going to be too much going on for the short term. Um, there's probably not going to be any more integrations or not serious integrations in the near term. What is being done is they're actually... Um, doing work in preparation for Forcebridge 2 now. So there's some changes. They found new ways of doing things. They are actually working on those changes now. No ETA on that. It's going to be a while. As we know, bridges in the ecosystem are a very tricky thing. You cannot rush these things or else you end up with major catastrophes that happen. Um, but they are in the works right now with Force Bridge 2. Um, the next thing I want to touch on is uh, CKB had a, a slew of new performance updates and more progress on open transactions. Um, open transactions are a Nervo solution to help with some of the challenges of working with UTXOs, and it's a big step in unlocking the potential that we're always talking about. Uh, so there's uh, discussions for that going on right now in GitHub for any developers that are interested, and we'll put the link to that in the show notes. Um, and also a proof of concept open transaction based client server application for some kind of exchange is actually being developed. I don't have any more details than that. This is, that's all they gave me. Um, they are working through some of these things and I'm really looking forward to, to what they end up coming up with. Um, okay, and so another big one from the community that was asking about is the, the CKB light fork. As you know, we've had announcements for the soft fork that it's been deployed to testnet. And um, let's see, Monica, could you tell us what the light client is? Yeah, sure. So the CKB Light Client implements a sampling-based protocol um, based on Fly Client, which eliminates the requirement to download and verify all blocks. So this will allow users in resource-constrained environments, such as mobile devices or web browsers, to trustlessly and directly interact with CKB. So more information can be found um, in RFC 0044. All right, did that make any sense to you, Monica? If you could share what RFC <laughs> yeah, don't worry about it. Here, let's, let's add Matt here, because I see he's just joined the stream. Matt, could, could you give us a really basic, easy and understand explanation of what the Fly Client is? Uh-oh, we got some mic problems. I can't hear you, Matt my problem there you go okay <laughs> oh, good now okay uh yeah usually when we think about uh verifying a, a blockchain's history we think about downloading all the blocks uh, checking all the proof of work and with uh with fly client uh you, you can just download uh just a, a sample of those blocks just uh as a logarithmic number in math terms but basically like a, a small number of blocks and that that allows you to gain um some some certainty about the the history of the chain but it, it's enough to be able to interact with the chain that, that's what matters right so it's it's it really it's kind of like a concise representation which can be downloaded in minutes rather than days and possibly even less than possibly seconds we'll actually see what the the how the actual implementation is handled uh, but this is this is without reducing trust which is an important part because with most most chains out there 
um, there is a trust element that's going on, especially when you're using a mobile device. Is, is I'm sure all of us said use some kind of a wallet on your mobile device where it doesn't download anything, and it just starts up instantly. And that's because it's using trust of somebody else's servers, and it's not directly connected to the blockchain. And so this is a direct connection to the blockchain, effectively the same level of trust or reduction of trust, I should say, as if you were running the full blockchain node, uh, but it's a very limited, uh, lightweight version of that. So we'll have more updates for that in January of 2023. Um, there's still a lot of work that needs to be done. It's not on the test net, but there's still a code audit pending. Uh, tooling still needs to be updated. So it's going to be a little while on that. But anyway, it's excited to see that it's finally making some traction and it's going to be out the door soon. Okay, so the next one that we should go through is tooling. So there's just a couple things that I'm going to mention here. I know we're really jumping around a lot here, but we have so much to get through here. Um, there's a new JavaScript framework that's uh, to build um, apps, which is called Kuai. I think that, I hope I'm pronouncing that. It's K-U-A-I. That's in development. Uh, Lumos, which we had been using previously, is now in maintenance mode as well. It just had light client support being added to it. So it's it's still out there, still being maintained, but it's we're not really adding any new features into it. They're, they're working with a new framework that they're going to be pushing out. Uh, Neuron is also getting new updates, including Apple from um, Apple Silicon on the new Apple MacBooks and everything it's going to be able to run there. Um, and there's special requests from the team that if you are having any problems with Neuron, please report them on GitHub. Uh, I know that's not the most convenient thing for everybody, but you can just sign up with your Google ID and the team would really appreciate that. And that's also where they give support for everything. Um, and then Jan wanted me to mention that we are adding support for EIP 712, or, or I guess there were some announcements around EIP 712. Uh, Monica, what is EIP 712? So it's a procedure for hashing and signing of type structured data as opposed to just byte strings. All right. Uh, Matt, do you have an English definition for us on that? Sure. So uh, Ethereum implements this now where if you sign a, a message in MetaMask, it'll actually say what the data is that you're you're signing. And pre, you know, prior to CKB implementing EIP 712, all you get is a hash of that information, which doesn't tell you anything about what you're signing. So there's a, a real reduction in, in security from a user just signing something that they, they don't quite know what's going into it. Right. So it's a huge, huge security improvement here just for the average user. Um, keeps it easy for them to, to work with, but also understand what they're actually signing, which is an important thing. Uh, so anyway, Jan has not told us exactly what that is, but he's hinting at, at something here. So I'm hoping that I'm hoping it's exactly what Matt just mentioned here and that we'll actually have something in MetaMask that shows what's going on when you're signing these transactions. Um, okay, so next one we need to go through is CODA, which is the Compact Token Aggregator Standard, which we've mentioned a couple times uh, before. Uh, Monica, what is your favorite token standard? I love these questions. Um, <laughs> I don't have one. <laughs> I don't have a preference. That's <laughs> fine. Matt, do you have a, a favorite token? No. <laughs> no? Well, I would have to say that mine probably is CODA now, even though I haven't had a chance to personally work with it. It is a very interesting one. This is the one where it uses sparse Merkle trees for storage, meaning that it's a very concise representation of an NFT put into a single cell. Um, so we all know NFTs from like Ethereum, where it's a, each NFT is distinctly separate. And um, on Nervos, they're also distinctly separate right now, each with their own cell, which takes up more CK bytes. Now, it's fine right now when CK bytes are cheap, but if you think into the future, as the as it could be, get quite expensive for a user, especially if they had hundreds of NFTs all in there, all taking up data. So, um, Coda is a standard that really just unifies everything and sticks everything into one single cell, and it does a concise representation where it doesn't actually matter how many NFTs you have stored in that cell; it's always the same amount of data, and it's somewhere like 150 bytes to 200 bytes, somewhere in there. Um, anyway, this is an innovation for the industry in general because this is this is a problem on all chains. When you add storage to the chain, when you're storing more and more stuff in the state, it's increasing costs for everybody who's running a node. 
And so you need to get that number down. That's why the incentives were put in place for Nervos to get people to get off their information all out of the state when it's not necessary. And so this is a this is a, a, an offering. It's been in use for a while, but the libraries and stuff are now maturing, uh, and we have new NFT stuff coming out pretty regularly um, that are is using the standard. Um, it's it's definitely something that we're excited about here. Uh, anything to add to it, either uh, Matt or Monica? Yeah, I think the the economic model has a lot to do with with this. Uh, the only other chain I've seen implement something similar is a, a project on Solana, and I think the the incentives have to be there to push people to use this kind of thing. If if people can just cheaply store data on the chain, then why why would they make things more complicated and use this uh, Merkle tree solution, which does it's it's not as easy as say interacting with ERC seven twenty one. NFTs from like an application developer standpoint. So you, you need some sort of incentives to push people to use this, you know, shared space wisely. And I think Coda has really been the first thing that we've, we've seen the economic model of Nervos in action. Um, I was talking to a, someone from a, another blockchain project a few days ago, and they were saying that someone was spamming NFT artists with just junk NFTs just to, I guess, just as a hobby. And it was crashing their their wallet because this person would receive say five thousand NFTs one night, and then their wallet would crash. And um, you know, we we won't see that problem on on CKB, I don't think. And uh, it's just purely due to these economic incentives. All right, uh, let's keep moving on here. Next one is Joy ID. So this is the announcement came out really recently. It's a passwordless wallet aimed at mass adoption. Uh, Monica, do you have the description for us, the full description? Yeah, I do. Thanks to you guys. So Joy ID, it's a web-based non-custodial wallet that does authentication using biometric sensors like Touch ID and Face ID. And it also includes features like social recovery. Right. So this is an important one because this is based off of the new web auth and standard standard, which it has um, recently got, I think it's been out for a little while, but it's it hasn't gotten support from major operating systems like Apple's devices and stuff until really, really recently. So it uses um, public-private key pairs just like any other wallet, but it uses them in a trusted execution environment within the user's device. They never actually leave that user's device. Um, so it's estimated that I believe 81% of data breaches are due to pa poor password security. And so this is like an industry solution to actually helping um, to alleviate that. So it's, it's kind of a big deal. You're going to start seeing uh, adoption from this in various other applications. And, and Nervos is one of the first ones here to actually adopt it that I'm aware of, at least. Matt, do you know anything about that? Yeah, it's, um, it has been out for a while. Um, I think any... Any mobile device at this point supports it if it's Apple or Android. Um, iPhone didn't support it until earlier this year, which we we had a whole push around the passkey adoption. Um, but yeah, I think any any Android phone will have this. Or you just have a chip in your phone that can hold private keys, and there's a, um, associated cryptographic algorithm that uh, Nervos is one of the only blockchains that that supports it. Right. Yeah. That's I think SCCP two fifty six R one which as we know, Nervos does not have any hard lines on the encryption. All it needs is a library to be able to support something. So not all blockchains are actually even able to take advantage of this right now. Um, some of them don't have, have that support for that algorithm and they'd actually have to hard fork to get it in. Whereas Nervos, we just need a library and any developer can take advantage of it. Uh, so anyway, Joy ID will launch on Testnet very soon. And I believe they're aiming for mainnet launch in Q1 of 2023. Uh, don't hold them to those to those dates. We want to make sure that it goes smoothly. This is just like other things. This is a a passwordless wallet. We got to make sure that it's done right, uh, not quickly necessarily. Uh, let's see. So Axon, there's been a lot of questions about Axon in the in the community, which is a configurable, high performance sidechain framework built with built in operability. Uh, Monica, uh, do you know, did that make any sense to you? Do you know what Axon is? Yeah, so when we were kind of like spitting off, um, God woke into, you know, its own own thing. Uh, Axon came up quite a bit. And so my understanding is that it's like a framework, like a side chain that basically anyone can take 
and sort of like build out of the box. Um, I think also there's like higher throughput. So it, like at one point, I think it was considered for the gaming because I think gaming would need that type of support. Um, but that that was just sort of my understanding. So not a dev guy, yeah. just, just reminding you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Matt, Matt, do you want to add anything to that? Yeah, um, I think if when people think about uh, Cosmos chains, I think Axon kind of fits into that that kind of mindset of if someone wanted to start their own blockchain, they they could use Axon as uh, an option to do a high performance chain, and it's Ethereum compatible. And it also brings in some of the magic of CKB. So we were, we were just talking about Joy ID, and I, I don't think we're there yet that we could really talk about exactly. Axon and its relation to CKB in terms of supporting something like Joy ID, but everything I've seen points to th that kind of solution working. Where if you wanted to have users have native mobile wallets, you could do that within Axon. Right. Yeah. So the, Axon, Axon is definitely it serves similar purposes to to what Godwoken does, but this is the configurable version, whereas Godwoken is more of the 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 standard expected version of and the environment's always going to be the same right that's that's the easiest one to get started on axon is another evm environment but it has much more configurability in how it actually operates so they're kind of different opposites of the spectrum here um so we're hoping the you know this is nervos wants to address all ends of the spectrum all different types of blockchain and things and pull them all into our ecosystem because that's part of what we're about we're part of the, the flexibility of being able to have a, the options to build out your project as it's needed, not necessarily with just what is out there, what happens to be available, because one size doesn't fit all, as we've seen um, pretty evidently in the industry in the, over the last couple of years. Um, so the first release will be coming out soon. It'll have pretty limited features. Um, the tooling documentation is still being worked on. Uh, we know that uh, the it, there's not actually going to be a a firm ETA on when it's going to be mainnet, mainnet ready is. And it's testnet, it's considered to be testnet ready. And right now they consider the code to actually be mainnet quality, but um, they are testing it with some small projects. There isn't, a, they're not going to actually launch their own network since it is a framework for other projects to use. They're just going to continue to work with these projects and there isn't actually going to be a firm mainnet launch date. Um, one of those companies is Kevin's company, Tunnel Vision Labs. They're working on some kind of a DeFi project that uses Axon. I don't have any additional details on what, exactly what that is. That's all they were, were willing to give me at this time. Um, and then Cypher's company, Nervina, is also mulling over some kind of something with Axon and Joy ID, which Matt mentioned. We, we're not really too sure what they're, we're, they're thinking yet. And then there, there will be more team announcements to follow, but uh, that's all. They're, they're being pretty tight with it right now. Okay, so we should also mention the UTXO Alliance, which um, there's been some headway on that recently. Like uh, for all, for anybody who's been following it, they know that the UTXO Alliance started way, way back. It's like more than a year ago, and it was pretty quiet on what was going on. There was in uh, behind closed doors, there was some some chatter here and there, but it was really pretty quiet. Uh, now there's actually some big pushes being. Um, that are actually happening. So the recent, um, they recently had the second town hall meeting uh, that me and Matt were a part of. Um, they're putting together a lot more teams. There's a lot more organization going on. There's a technical a team working group that's slowly moving forward on a various things, starting to work on the beginnings of collaboration. Uh, the progress, I would say, is slow but steady. Uh, but uh, you know, we, we give thanks to IHK for providing additional resources to help really organize and push things forward. And it's really starting to show, show some potential. Uh, so, Matt, did you have anything to add to that? Yeah, I, I also want to emphasize that it is kind of like kick. I guess there's new life being breathed into it. I know for a while it is something that was just out there, but fortunately, there there were teams that were showing interest and you know kind of coming in in that time. So this probably, I think we encompass six blockchains right now who are attending these meetings and. I've shown interest in collaborating technically. I think that there's definitely a focus on working together technically in in this group. That's that's what we're all here to do. There's also some you know content marketing and really elevating the the idea of UTXOs because I think most of the industry is account model dominated when it comes to smart contracts. And um, yeah, I think we'll we'll see more you know toward the start of the year. I think a, a big question 
we'll, we'll usually get is how can someone join the UTXO Alliance and the feedback thus far has been just start coming to the meetings and then we'll we'll figure out something more formal. Right, yeah. So more more on that will be decided in the more formal processes later on. But right now there are like the, like Matt mentioned, there's a bunch of blockchains in there, but there's there's also some individual projects that have been attending the meetings too, uh, that are just in support of UTXO based projects, uh, blockchains. So uh, Monica, are, has there been any discussion of Godwoken joining the UTXO alliance? I, you know, I'm not sure, given that we're like EVM compatible. So it's it's certainly never come up in conversation. I can I can ask though if that's something we would consider. Yeah, you know, I I really don't know if it's it's a proper fit because you're not really UTXO. You're EVM on UTXO, I think though technically. Yeah. So yeah, mm -hmm. so there's there there might be room there. Um, if uh, yeah, if there's any interest, I would suggest uh, at least investigating if there's some opportunity because it's starting to start up now and we we want more people in there. Um, so let's keep moving on. So the next part is we're going to be going through some updates from Godwoken. Uh, so let's see. The first one here, Godwoken is officially carbon neutral now. Is that right? Yes, we are. So um, basically, you know, to offset travel tech use by our team, our chain, we wanted to go carbon neutral. And we actually um, decided to go with a company that's out of Africa. And what we liked about it so much is that it's more of like empowering, not necessarily enabling. So like a lot of times you'll see these charities, you know, carbon neutral type um, like acts where they're going out and doing things for people rather than giving people the tools to be able to do it for themselves. And um, so basically there's there are these wood burning stoves that are built and there's less risk of burn and smoke inhalation. There's less wood used. Uh, so it saves time with collecting wood fire. And it's also faster to cook things. So two things can be cooked instead of at one time. And we got about 334 tons uh, to offset 334 tons of CO2. So that's the first thing. Um, the second thing is that we just wrapped up at ETH India. So Godwoken and Nervous, we actually uh, were there together. We hosted India's first blockchain and gaming conference. So Jay, who is the project manager of Build Club, which we talked about a little bit um, earlier, he actually hosted a workshop and it was to walk Web3 devs through creating their very first blockchain game. So they were able to mint it and um, it was it was really great. We had around 250 people show. So that was really nice. Um, and then, you know, there was like a little after party. I don't know if anyone here watching would like to kind of see some highlights. We did post it on our Twitter. Um, so God Woken Rises, at God Woken Rises on Twitter, if you guys want to look at some of that. Um, right, right. And here, before you move on, so how many people from, uh, from the God Woken team actually went to ETH India? So there was three of us. We had Sam, who is our DevRel, and then Jay, who's our Build Club project manager, and then Anuba, who sort of put the whole conference together in India because she's in India. All right, fantastic. Um, yeah, and if you don't mind, I want to back up just for a, a quick moment to back to yes, the yes, uh, carbon yes. neutrality. I mean, that's really great what you guys are doing there. I'm, I'm curious, is there any more initiatives that uh, are coming out on that same line, just like of carbon neutrality or like environmental type of things? You know, for us, I think so we have made sure that we're covered, you know, like our entire year moving forward all of 2023, we went into like estimates, you know, of travel, how much each person on our team will travel and to make sure that we were covering all of those things to offset the carbon. One of the cool things is that let's, let's just say like you or Matt or myself, we want to individually be a part of this outside of what we do for work. We can actually go and support them on a monthly basis. Um, so there's actually like different options if anyone is interested in looking into it. Um, it's Ripple Africa, so you guys can, you know, check it out online. Um, you know, one of the things, too, is it's actually empowered a lot of women and children there as well to be able to be, you know, to um, cook for themselves, to to have those supplies 
Um, and again, you know, going back to like saving time, it's actually helped them to save time from having to go walk long distances, come back and do all of those like laborious things. Yeah, it sounds really like it's it's pretty life changing for them. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Okay, let's keep moving on though. So block blockchain gaming 101. What is that? Yeah, so this is actually one of our many courses that we are currently putting together. So um, it's not live yet. We do expect it to go live in quarter one. I would say mid mid ish quarter one, maybe. Uh, maybe late quarter one. So what it basically is, it's a course that allows game developers to learn how to build games on the blockchain and vice versa. So blockchain developers to build games on the blockchain as well. Um, so, you know, that would, that would kind of be like whoever's interested in learning. Um, I think this course in general, you really don't need to have much development experience. It really walks you kind of step by step how to do it from scratch. So actually once it is live, I I want to take the course because I do want to have, you know, more knowledge as to what we're doing, what we're building, and just be more involved in that in that sense. Um, and actually going back to ETH India. So with the workshop that we hosted, um, we're actually going to be putting a course together for that as well. So this is something, you know, um, kind of like a library of courses that we are going to be rolling out. First one starting, like I said, Q1, um, everything will be free. So, you know, anyone who wants to take this course, they really don't run any risk of anything because everything is free and it's put together by some very knowledgeable devs. So I'm excited right. about it. Yeah, great, great, great. Yeah, I mean, that's that's great. Anything that helps onboard more devs, and in this case, non-devs, I'm a little bit uh, curious, what, is, what does that mean when you say non-devs break into gaming and blockchain? Yeah, so like I was saying, this course is really like, you don't need to have any sort of developer experience at all. So someone like myself, who is interested in learning how to maybe build a game, um, it's really like a step-by-step, -step, sort of like hand, like really holding your hand uh, through the entire course to help you, you know, build a project. Um, we actually also, as our course go li goes live, we will, you know, along with the course being available, we will be hosting some in real life events so that anyone who would like to join, um, you know, we'll, we'll definitely put those updates out, but they will be able to participate as well and, you know, learn from scratch. Yeah, yeah, that's that's great. I mean, and that's also it's very important, particularly for our our blockchain audience, which we have a couple devs, but there's a lot of non devs out there. If this is something you're interested in. You wanted to see what it's like to, you know, maybe you were curious about what it takes to actually build your own game. It's something that you should probably be checking out. So mm -hmm. uh, yeah, let's, looking forward to that. Okay, so next one we need to go through is Band VRF. Uh, what is the, what exactly is that? Yeah, I think, Jordan, you would actually do a much better job explaining this than I would. I will say it's it's live on Godwoken, so the random number generator. Um, since Godwoken has gone into more of a gaming focus, not that it's our only focus, uh, but it's certainly you know one of our main focuses, this random number generator is great for games. So, like, I... I you know, coming from like a Mario background, when I think of this, it makes me think of the one up or whatever, or the the mystery cube where you you're like playing Mario Kart, you hit the cube and you get a mushroom or a star or whatever. Right. So um, I think for for games like that, it's super useful. It's also really necessary. But Jordan, I think you and Matt would do a much better job explaining like the technical side more than I can. Yeah, well, let me hand this over to Matt. Matt, if you have the answer, uh, what, is, what is it? And more importantly, why is this important to any project, and particularly to gaming? Sure. Yeah, I don't know exactly how the random numbers are generated. So I, I can't share that, that part of things. But I do know that it is like an, an API that a smart contract can, can call and just say, hey, I, I need a random number. And, you know, it, it's used, like Monica was saying, if you just want to have 
a, a random thing happen. You you need some sort of ran, uh, source of randomness, and that's what you get with this uh, VRF, and it's you know, verifiable. So there's there's no way it can be uh, biased or gamed. And yeah, in in terms of game gaming, especially if there's some sort of financial component, say if you're playing poker or something like that, uh, you you need to have this this randomness in order to make it fair. Right, right. And so I can add a little bit to that, which is blockchains are, are largely based around predictability in certain respects. And so that's a problem when you're talking about games and things with financial incentives. We've seen a lot of projects actually within the ecosystem, the, e the Ethereum ecosystem in the past, where they didn't, they made attempts to have a random function, but it wasn't truly random enough. And because of that, uh, they these games were drained out of their their entire supply of, of funds by people who figured out that they could actually predict what their next random number was going to be. So this is a band VRF is a, a is, is it an Oracle. Am I getting that right? Is it an, it, for, yeah. yeah. Okay. So it's an yeah, Oracle system. Oracle. Yeah. To, to make sure that these are actually random numbers in a verifiable way. Um, and absolutely essential for any of these types of, of financial gaming type of things. Um, so let's see, last thing that we should probably go through is the Twitter spaces. Uh, you have an upcoming one for, is it for Godwoken that's coming up? Yeah, so actually we're planning to have a whole team there. We're trying to do the host these at least once a month um, to provide updates to the community, somewhat similar to this, and then also take questions. Okay, great. And that's on December 14th, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. Okay, looking forward to that. Okay, so let's move on to updates from community projects. Um, so before we get started in that, I want to just give everybody a quick uh, reminder that we are still in a bear market and absolutely some projects will will fail. And um, like, and there's, there's a huge estimated number. Monica, what's the statistic on that? Yeah, so it's estimated that something like 90 to 95% of all startups fail over time. And this is based on non-crypto startups. Right, right. So I've heard very similar types of numbers come out of the industry. Um, I'm, I'm from the tech industry prior to crypto industry, and we had those numbers get thrown around all the time. There's all kinds of projects that come out there, um, talented people, good developers, uh, but for whatever reason, they don't, they don't make it. Um, it could be just the wrong time of, that they're, they're launching, wrong time to market, too early to market of lot, all kinds of reasons. Um, and it just happens. That's the nature of any startup oriented industry is that a very large percentage of, of, of projects will actually fail. So we've, se we've seen, unfortunately, see a couple projects in the Nervos ecosystem fail as well. Uh, and at Close Their Doors, Collect is closing. Uh, they announced the closure on November 12, 2022. Um, Monica, was Collect available when you, when you first joined Nervos? Yeah, it was. And I actually, um, I had one. So like you guys know the community member, I think his name was Dimitri, who was creating all sorts of really beautiful, like NFT art. Actually, honestly, one of the most, like one of my favorite artists. Um, and I had won one of, one of the NFTs that he had on Collect. Right. How about you, Matt? Did you have anything in, in Collect? Uh, no. No, I never, never got around no, to buying no, any NFTs yeah. on Collect. Yeah, I have a couple on Collect, and I have a couple from uh, um, MeBow also. Um, and so anyway, uh, those those are still going to be available, though, which is important to mention. Even though the Collect website interface is gone, um, all the NFTs that you had are still available in your wallet, as are any funds that you might have had on the platform. So nothing's actually lost there. Um, and then, you know, we, we wish, of course, the best to the Collect team, whatever their next endeavor is. And I, there was some some chatter on Twitter about, uh, I believe Tanner was out there saying that he wanted to take over the Collect site and do something with it. I don't know where that conversation left off. We'll see if something happens, but you never know. Anyway, we'll, we'll keep we'll keep moving forward and there will be new marketplaces that emerge. Uh, the next one that we definitely have to touch on, though, is Nexus DAO, uh, which was uh, the, they announced their closure on... December 2nd, and they gave one month notice here uh, that they're going to be turning it off. That's that's the site that has the Thai stable coin and the DCKB token. Um, have uh, Monica have, or Matt, have either of you used that system at all? Uh, no. Yeah, I no. 
I used I used DCKB a little bit. <laughs> DCKB was the the token that allows you to have a semi fungible token that you can kind of use in DeFi, um, even though your your real CKB is still locked in the DAO. Now the first version that came out wasn't it had problems as as in the only the person who locked it could be the could be the person who unlocked it. So if you sold your tokens, you got your DCKB so tokens and you sold it on exchange. At some point in the future, you got to buy them back. Now I heard that that problem, they made progress on it, but unfortunately I don't know where their interface is. Um, and they they decided to eventually that they couldn't keep it up in the bear market and they decided to close their doors. We have a replacement for that though, which is ICKB, which solved uh, solves all of the problems that's being worked on now that will uh, effectively be the replacement for DCKB in the future. Not It's not there yet, it's not quite out, but I've been working with Freud, a uh, community member who's been working very diligently on it. Um, so the recommendation right now is that if you have any tie or DCKB tokens, please go ahead and convert all of that back to CKB. Um, nothing is technically being lost in terms of like if once the Nexus DAO website closes, um, you're still going to have all your tokens in your wallet effectively, but it might be quite difficult to get it out. There, there might not be an, a, an interface available for you to convert it back to a CKB easily. So we recommend that you, you go ahead and, and you do that now, um, especially since in the future we're going to have iCKB available. So don't waste any time to that if you are, you are a user of the site. Okay, so let's keep moving on. We have, uh, there are, were some things that uh, are, are positive, some new developments that are happening, even though this is a really, really bad bear market. Uh, we had new mining ASICs announced uh, recently. Uh, Bit, Bit, uh, Bitmain, excuse me, had the K7 for professional miners and Goldshell has the CK Box 2 for home miners. Monica and Matt, are either of you miners at all? Nope. <laughs> Never done any mining. I've, I've, I've done some. Big boys, yeah. Yeah, I've done I've done some mining. It's definitely not for the faint of heart. Let me tell you, it's it is a, a pain in the ass um, for, on a lot of that stuff. Uh, but it's also kind of fun too. Um, but we do have new mining rigs coming out, which is a I would say that's a strong statement by the ASIC producers because they they know that this is a bear market as well. Um, and, but they are putting their support and their investment into new technology behind Nervos. So, I mean, they, they, this is an investment for them, right? This, this hardware doesn't just come out of thin air. They actually have to produce it. They have to, to design and produce this type of stuff. And it's a risk for them. If they didn't sell the miners, they'd be in a, a, a severe loss there. So they're investing in indirectly, I would say, in the community itself. Um, and then we had our own Jane Wu from the foundation. She gave us a speech at the World Digital Mining Summit in uh, 2022. And so uh, if anybody's interested in watching that, we'll have that in the show notes as well. And then we had um, a couple, couple small integrations that I want to just quickly mention here. Uh, Infinix Mobile, which is a smartphone company, which it, basically I think it's uh, Asia, the Middle East, and Africa primarily. They have adopted the CODA standard for an NFT drop. So that's always good to hear that we have new integrations coming out. And then um, MixPay, another one, it's a decentralized Web3 cross-chain payment protocol has integrated CKB. And they're, what they are, they're a small site right now, but they have great numbers. If you go to the website, they've actually, they're, they're growing rapidly and they are trying to be like the visa of crypto. Um, so we'll see, we'll see, I'm sure more from both of those in the future. Um, okay, so anyway, let's, let's go move on to QA and see if we have anything. Uh, let's see. Matt, I see you're in the chat room. Have you seen any questions come through that are good ones here? Uh, I think uh, there's a good question around, uh, will there be a new interface on the Neuron wallet? And the uh, answer is yes. Uh, there, there have been some screenshots circulating in the community from GitHub uh, showing the new, uh, I guess, uh, cosmetic refresh on Neuron. I know they're doing some work around integrating the light client. Uh, so I, I think early next year you'll you'll see a new um, new version of Neuron. And a, a question about Yokai, uh, Yokai and the CKB roadmap. Uh, so just a reminder, Yo Yokai is not affiliated with the uh, Nervos Foundation or CKB core team. It's completely a project uh, separate from the I guess not not related to Godwoken either. It's a DAP that is built on top of Godwoken. And uh, yeah, I think that that's all the questions I see. Right, I see some other comments in here. Monica is the best is a, a comment I see. 
Um, but yeah, that looks like that's probably it for questions. Oh, well, that's that's that is good. That means we answered everybody's questions in our conversations here. Oh wait, what is this? I see another one. Is it also possible to protect via ledger with CK bull? I'm guessing they're saying, can we use um, ledger wallets with CK bull? Do you know on that one, Matt? No, they, they don't have that integration yet. I, I think they intend to, but they're they're working through some some other stuff first. Yeah, what do you guys use, um, hardware wallet wise? Ledger. Yeah, Ledger. I have a Ledger too. Monica, do you have any hardware wallets? Isn't SafePal one of them? SafePal yep. is one of them. That's, yeah. that's the one that I have then. Mm -hmm. From you guys, from Nervous. <laughs> yeah, so we, we we definitely that's. I mean, you can use whatever you want to protect your stuff, but I personally recommend hardware wallets because they are. Um, they're a good extra step there. In the event that your computer was hacked or taken over or something, the hardware wallet is separate from that. It gives a another layer of abstraction, um, and it's pretty easy to use too for the most part. And uh, yeah. it's it really you don't have to be a developer or something to use a hardware wallet. It's just a little device with some point and click or little clicky buttons on it to select your crypto, and that it gives you the ability to send out your crypto but also keep it safe, kind of like offline almost like a cold cold storage type of system so i recommend those types of things um but if um if you have a large sum of cryptocurrency i can't recommend enough that you use a true cold wallet of some kind um or a steel wallet is probably my favorite one which is a it's actually um it's it's a it's a, a piece of a plate of steel basically that you hammer your numbers into or something there's various, there's different kinds of ones. One's little metal pieces that you arrange or whatever, and you, you take your, it, it's basically backing up your recovery phrase in something that is so, so uh, hard to destroy that even if your house was to light on fire and burn down, it would probably survive that and you could recover um, your funds. So these are definitely things to, to consider if you, um, uh, but you can also use like a paper wallet or something too. You just got to, maybe break it up and give it to different uh, people that you're um, that you truly trust right that's it's a it, anyway i'm sorry i'm going down a bit of a rabbit hole here how you how you actually secure your private keys is a, a very tough thing for the entire industry it's just a very important type of thing so make sure you're safe out there okay so anyway we are we are we're actually a little bit ahead of schedule which is great uh, we we went pretty quick through that and that was a lot of information um, but um, I think uh, we should go ahead and wrap up if we can actually do one in time instead of going over every single time like we always do. Um, any final thoughts from uh, you, Monica, or Matt? Um, no, I, I really enjoyed chatting with you guys and going through updates, and I, I hope we could do this more often together. Yeah, we yeah. definitely should. It's been great. Yeah, always always appreciative of your time and great to talk to you, Jordan. Thanks, Monica, for taking the time. Um, I, I think the the thing that I'll share is that we we are truly in a bear market, and like it it feels that way as as we see, you know, like like collect seeing collect go down hurt, and then seeing the the problems with Nexus, you know, really quite uh, I, I don't know disheartening. It, it's just difficult, and I think as as a community, I think everyone's kind of feeling this this market and. Um, yeah, I think the, the only way out is through. Like, we, we have to get through it together. And I, I don't think there's any easy way out. And it, it is very much about just what, what we decide to do from here. You know, th that determines the outcomes. And, um, yeah, I just kind of uh, express that everyone who's feeling pain right now, everyone else is feeling that as well. So it, it's really something we're all going through together, even though we, we struggle on our own. Yeah, yeah, definitely. That's completely true, um, but also bear markets are a time for building, and uh, that's what the Nervos is, Nervos is continuing to do. We have new teams, new projects that are continuing to roll through. I know that Build Club is still really, really busy. They that's why they have their own dedicated project manager going through right that. Um, it's we'll we'll eventually get to the other side of this, and in the meantime, it's um, it's a time where we can finally have a little bit of breathing room here. Um, slow and steady is what wins a race, right? So we'll get through that. Anyway, I want to thank uh, both you, Matt, and uh, Monica for joining. 
And let's go through, just before we leave, any any last minute socials or reminders that you want to give of upcoming events. Uh, Monica? Yeah, so guys, just remember on the 14th, so this is actually just next week, next Wednesday at 11 a.m. Pacific Standard, we are going to be having a team chat on Twitter spaces. So Eric, who is the CEO of Godwoken, will be there. He will be sharing updates along with myself, Sam, all of the team, Jay, uh, Rob, who is our, our game dev in residence. So all of us will be there. It'll be great to interact with the community and also take any questions that you guys might have about Godwoken and Belt Club. Okay, Matt, uh, where we where is the place that we should follow you? Uh, you can find me at Matt underscore Bitcoin. And uh, yeah, I'd encourage everyone to follow the Nervous Network account. Uh, there's always plenty of updates uh, going on on there. All right. Um, and that, I think that does it. That'll wrap it up. Thanks to everybody out there who's been uh, listening. And I guess happy holidays to everybody. Take care, everyone. All right. Take care. Bye, guys. We're all still still here on the other side. Usually, usually the, yeah. it's just me and Jordan. After after the, when when we go to the other side, it's usually just the two of us. But thanks for sticking around. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, I wasn't sure what to do next. To be honest. Oh. Oh, we're still live. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna just hang up. No, actually. <laughs>